right. Welcome to episode 123. Fire. 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 We need the fire because there's an ice storm outside right now. <clears throat> Started in Dallas. Always blame Texas. And you know what? They're canceling flights that it's starting there. My little friend Dorfy Dorf was going to fly out to go do what? See Bruce Springsteen. He's so excited. Yeah, it's not my thing, but he would have taken me too. And I'm like, dude, well, first of all, I have to work. But second of all, right. I'm not born to run. Oh, boo. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here all week. Oh, my God. So many things, Termite. So many things. Where was I? Well, I was in Philadelphia. And that? I don't know if you saw the video of me running the Rocky Stairs. But I probably should have tried to run, like, with my arms down. I was trying to do it to the song, and I think I just looked like a crazy person. But not as crazy as there was about a 70-year-old man behind me doing push-ups because I think he thought he was actually Rocky. Like, he'd run up the steps, and then he'd do, like, 20 push-ups. And then he'd run 20 more and do 20. I'm like, dude, this is just going to actually kill you. <laughs> You're actually going to die, like, right here in front of all these tourists. And then they moved the statue down. So if you look at the steps now, I don't know why they do it. They probably, because the art museum, there's an art museum at the top or some sort of museum. It's the Philadelphia Art Museum. It's the art museum. And I probably think they're like, hey, man, can we, yeah, um, can we just move that a little bit lower? So now it's at the bottom of the steps. If you're looking at it to the right, the Rocky statue. And I don't know what time of day they did it, but 49ers fans put their jersey on Rocky. I saw that on Twitter. Sometimes I don't think the 49er I don't know that other people that haven't been to Philly many, many times as I have, which also I found my favorite, one of my favorite bars of all time, McGillan's downtown, Irish pub, like in an off street kind of an alley. (laughs) Um, Oh my God, it was so fun. Um, uh, I don't, I've been there enough to, I know that some of the Philly fans, not all, not my friend Dory, but some are, they're not kidding. And like, if you, um, you know, cross a line, it's not like a friendly Cubs cards rivalry. No. Like, right. No. Not friendly no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they take it very seriously. And as long as you respect that, everything will be fine. But if you start getting disrespectful, yeah. Anyway, I got out of Dodge. <laughs> I was very excited to see that uh, Jalen Hurts, the quarterback for the 49ers, he said a couple weeks ago, they asked him, what are you going to do to prepare for the Cowboys? He said, I don't know, but right now I'm going to go home and listen to Anita Baker, which I thought was kind of oh. weird for a young guy. Yeah. Not that, cool. but she, he's like 25 and she's like 65. And I thought, look at him being an old soul calling out Anita Baker. And then I guess Jeff Lowry, the owners of the Eagles, was like, well, then somebody call Miss Baker, send a jet and piles of money, and boom, she showed up. <laughs> I'm like, wow, look at her go, singing the national anthem. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so it was a great, the casino was great. It's always great at Parks Casino. And I always say I never meet anybody under 50 named Kathleen. Oh. And the lady who runs the whole, all the tech stuff and all that sound, she's, her name's Kathleen and she's very young, probably under 30. <laughs> and so she is officially the only little Kathleen I know. And I have, to, I'm going to have to say little till she's 70. Right. Because I don't know any other. Everybody changed it to like Caitlin right. or whatever. You just, it's a, you'd probably, if you're going to find it, it's in Boston or Philly, where there's a lot of Irish people, yeah, a ton Chicago. of Irish people, huh? Maybe Chicago. Maybe Chicago, definitely Ireland, but they don't pronounce the H. No. It's just Kathleen, which I prefer. Kathleen. We don't need the H. No. And we definitely don't need the extra A that Jeff Fox really throws in. Kathleen, <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 you can't add vowels, Jeffrey. All right, what are we doing? So there was a lot of stuff backstage. I'm going to be... What did I eat at McGillan's? A Reuben. Hello. So good. Irish pub Reuben. No Russian dressing. I hate the Thousand Island, whatever they want to call it. No, 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 no. And I had a green beer. Why? Huh? Why? I saw that. Why did I have a green beer? Yeah, why was it green? For the Eagles. Shut up. I'm serious. Stop. No, they made everything green. The whole place, the whole town was green. Wow. Yeah. That's intense. And uh, you know what? <laughs> I put on Twitter. Wow. I put on Twitter because this was true. I was staying, I won't say which hotel. It's, it's a nice hotel. And the 49ers were on the top floor. Not all of them, but many of them. Mm-hmm. And many of their relatives were in that hotel because I saw t- signs that said team social and there's 
you know, I'm seeing 75 year old people. I know they're not playing. It's right. their dad and it's their mom or whatever. And uh, no, I thought about crashing the team social, but I think it would be. <laughs> I didn't have any 49ers gear. And I'm sure they had great food in there. Um, but I, uh, at 4.45 a.m., the uh, sound of sleep. Now, I didn't have to get up <clears throat> till like 6.15. And I was all excited about being able to sleep that late on a travel day. 4.15 a.m. Oh, oh, oh. And attention, attention, the fire alarm been pulled. Oh. But that message kept repeating for 20 solid minutes. Oh. Now, I've been in cheap hotels <laughs> where they launch it once and then it's on you. And then we all go out in the hallway and stare at each other in pajamas and look at it like, are you going? <laughs> and then if nobody goes, I don't go. And I'm like, I'm just deciding this okay. based on other people in a Marriott courtyard. But this was a nicer hotel. And it kept going on and on and on. Then it stopped. But there was no all clear given. Right. It was just. True. So then another 10 minutes later, probably. Uh, uh, there is no emergency. A fire truck came. I heard it. Um, you can all go back to bed. Well, we're all up. I mean, who's I'm now I'm just up now. I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? Go to the Philly airport early and have a cheesesteak because I didn't eat dinner last night. Nice. So I'm going to go have a cheesesteak and a beer and get on a plane and sleep on my way home. And that's exactly what I did. Perfect. Excellent plan. Great plan. Um, but the 49ers were in that thing. And then if you Google it, the 49ers did that to the Eagles in 2014 in San Francisco. And so I put it on Twitter, and then one lady's like, I can't even believe you would have seen it. First of all, it's a prank. It's all in good fun. My favorite tweet that was from some guy wrote, a Philly guy, he wrote, we have sleeper cell agents located all over the town, <laughs> and when called to service, they execute their orders extremely well. They will all, someday when they are unveiled, be honored for their service. <laughs> totally. I'm like, it's just good fun. If they did it, you know, you do it in our town, we do it in your town. They're, right. Calm down. Well, I saw them all celebrating it, too, on Twitter, too. Yeah. A lot of them were super proud they did it. But that's the Eagle way. Yeah. They don't care. Nope. They, and it was done to them. If you believe the articles, 2014, look it up. It got, and they don't forget that stuff. No. no like, as, as a Midwest person, we'd be like, well, just because they did it doesn't mean we're going to rise to that. We're not. We're too polite. We're too mannerly. We would never do that. Plus, as a Midwestern person, I'd be like, hey, you guys, there's a lot of people in this hotel that are not on the 49ers. Miss Madigan being one of them, wide awake at 445. And then I'm like, let me get my glasses. Let me look out. I looked out in the hallway. There was nobody there. I'm like, I guess no one's taking this seriously. Why am But you can't go back to sleep. It won't stop. <laughs> And then I thought, why is there no flashing? Because what about hearing impaired people? I'm not even sure my dad, who's not fully hearing impaired, could have heard that. Really? Well, he's pretty deaf, all in all. Jack, and he doesn't sleep with his hearing aids in. So Jackalope's super duper deaf. <laughs> he's a super deaf goat. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how do you alert. What about people that can't hear? Because oh, I, I didn't see any flashing. It was weird. Well, we took it. How will they know? My friend Dory has a shirt, a Philly shirt that says nobody likes us, so we don't care. <laughs> That'd be the exact opposite of a Midwest mentality. We're uh -huh. like, why don't you like us? What can we do to change? <laughs> so oh, my sorry. God, I'm so sorry to hear that. Sorry. What can we do? Anyway, left backstage, a lot of stuff came backstage. A lot of chips, the Zaps, which I couldn't wait to taste. These are from uh, Shannon. Shannon sent a very funny card, and it's uh, Voodoo Hot New Orleans. So Zaps. And hers are East Coast deals. If you're on the East Coast, I would recommend either one of them. This is Han Zaps is Hanover, Pennsylvania. Yeah, and these are their Voodoo Heat. And usually I say don't throw all that heat on a potato chip, but it's totally worth it. They're great. That could be highly addictive. Um, I'm drinking. I got six of these. This one's not open because it's in here. This is Stacy's mom. Evil Genius, Cit Citra IPA made somewhere in Pennsylvania. Let's give these guys a shout out. Oh, it's a right, right from Philly. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Evil Genius Bur Beer Company. Great. Pittstown, PA, under special service agreement through Philadelphia, PA. Yeah, I just like Stacy's Mom. Wasn't that a song? Stacy's Mom has got it 
going on, Stacey's mom. This is from, from Rosemary and Rich. Go Birds. Well, you guys won. You're on your way. What a boring game, though. I mean, yeah. well, you can't, I mean, God, they had pictures of four Niner fans and these memes on Twitter saying, when you spent, <laughs> when you spent 10, dollars. you know, ten, what's your airline, your hotel, your ticket, it's all going to be five grand total if you're lucky to watch. Uh, what's Josh Johnson? Who's the backup quarterback? He's like number three. Was his name Josh Johnson? Josh. But, I mean, when you spend all that money to fly to Philly to watch that guy, <laughs> your second string, yeah. and really he's probably third string because yeah. Garoppolo's hurt. Purdy's hurt. Purdy's hurt. Yep. I think got hurt in the first school. I mean, yeah. 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 Um, this came, the, oh, the hair sweet corn. Thanks for the cat treats. They love one. They love them all. Greenies, right? The These are temptations. They love temptations. Okay. Yeah, the one that they didn't go full on in, Frisky's treats. Nah, they were kind of like, that's fine. But you could tell it wasn't like pure on Delicious. temptations or greenies excitement. No, <laughs> I got a lot of fee. I got, I got a lot of throwback on that. Mm-hmm. And I got a big foot visor. This is from, from Suzanne. She said, I know it's not your birthday, but this card was funny. Thanks for all the laugh. She likes the podcast. Um, it's Jesus on Twi- Twitter. 12 followers. Get it? Ha <laughs> ha! I get it. Uh, then this made me laugh so hard, and then we're moving on. Parks, Alicia and Jen, a little something for you and Baby Cat. They sent the ba- the treats. Um, SpaghettiOs. So this is my, I still love SpaghettiOs. But oh, yeah. this is what I love, because my mom would just, just dump these in pans, and that was going to be our dinner. Healthy kids entree. This is not at all a healthy child's entree. No. No, it's terrible for you. 31 grams of carbs. What am I going to go play in Wimbledon? <laughs> you, what do you think your kid's going to do? That they need to be jacked up on 30. Because this this is one can. This is what's in here. And I could eat this can in five seconds. I love SpaghettiOs. I've never even. I may make it tonight. Sugar. Oh, my God. Sodium. 600 milligrams. Really? Yeah. Would you like to? Yeah. You know, I don't care what's in it. I love it. But I, do, I think it's funny that they put on the back, healthy kids entree. Mm, ready in three minutes. And look, they did an NFL SpaghettiOs only with the meatballs. I don't want it without the meatballs. And I don't know what those meatballs are made of. I'm not even sure it's meat, but I love them. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But they partnered with the NFL. Those will be cooked later. I like to put that stuff down for the cats to see what they taste like tomato sauce, the look on their face. And this is hers, H-E-R-R-S, what's that? Fire roasted sweet corn, and I didn't think I'd like it because I don't love sweet stuff, uh-huh. but I love it. You know when you get, like, a, the fairs and stuff, they have the, the sweet corn that's roasted? Mm-hmm. That's what exactly what it tastes like, and it's gluten-free, I'll have to tell my sister. For once in their life, as advertised, it actually tastes like what they said. Really? Yeah, which is not very often anymore. Um. Good. Queen news. Oh, wait. I didn't taste this. This is so strange. Made me laugh, though. It's called the Ranch Darwinian. Quinton, New Jersey. This is what the label actually says. Yes, we have ranch. Homemade as fuck. <laughs> Bar milk ranch dressing. Yeah. Well, I'm like, wow, where can you sell that? Like, you can't get that in a grocery store. with. It's Philly. Maybe. They don't care. That. And then I thought, did somebody just make that and put it in a bottle and send it backstage? It's real, though. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Wow, it's really good. Wow, the Ranch Darwinian. I like it. I like it. It's real. you know what? It's got, like, um, kind of tastes like my rye dip. It tastes rye. Really? That's a winner. I'm not throwing that out. All right, moving on. Queen news. Okay. There's so many great things this week. Um, I really felt like like after New Year's Eve and then Martin Luther King holiday, like holidays and everything was just so stagnant there for a little bit. Um, Stevie's dates. Where's Stevie? There. Stevie's dates without that other man. <laughs> Not other, without that man. His first name would be Billy. Last name ends with Noel. Noel. 
Um, here's where Stevie's going by herself. In case you want to see her, I'll fire it off. Oh, I don't know. I can't read all this. I don't want all these ones with him. God damn it. I thought this was the list without him. No, but you can go look it up online. Oh, Schnotes. Schnotes. We'll put it in the Schnotes. We've already kind of mentioned that, but I was just, I thought I had the real thing. Um, Dolly Parton is responsible more than a thousand children in Scotland receiving free books. Oh, great. Boom. Yes. Throw the hammer down. That's good news. The Imagination Library is now in Scotland, too. Okay. They've re- received uh, in total over 25,000 free books. That's awesome. How great is that? Um. So that was just a new, they're, they're so excited they got more kids signed up. Good for her. Now we're moving on to update. Anna Dalvey. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> She's got so much going on, okay? So she had a birthday party, and she required everybody to sign NDAs, which are non-disclosure agreements, in case you're not in Hollywood and you don't know about those. Um, and basically, let me tell you, as the daughter of a lawyer, the NDAs don't really mean shit i mean go ahead hand them out oh sure i'll sign it but at the end of the day like if you murder somebody or something i can totally snitch on you but i think i think she did it because nobody cool was there oh yeah Yeah, i think it's a reverse she's have like a lot of people would say don't sign it because i don't want you to know who's here because it's super famous people that don't people want don't want People didn't know what they're doing. I right. think this is the opposite. <laughs> and But this is how she rolls. This is how con people roll. You'd make it sound like it was a big thing. Um, the, while the NDA obtained by page six required to attend the club or house arrest soiree appeared standard in its legalese. What stuck out that was underneath the signature, it asked for everyone's social security numbers. Stop it. Are you kidding? How high are you to give this lady information? <laughs> I would have made it all up, all of it. I would have said, sure, you can have it, and then just give some <laughs> random-ass number. Um, <laughs> they either left it blank or went as far to provide fake numbers. Um, it was presented to guests upon entry. I'm going to start doing that with my friend when they walk in. <laughs> <laughs> we could also report that the guests received them via email ahead of time. Um it was attended by, here's some people that were there. See if we all know who they are. Okay. Ready? Um, Cynthia Raleigh. Oh, no. You thought you knew and you don't. Nope. She's a designer. And her daughter, Rachel Rabbit. <laughs> Is that a real person? <laughs> Kat Marnell. Oh, Cynthia also designed. Who's Kat Marnell? Ben Whittycomb. Alexander Blinsky. See, that's what I mean. Nobody showed up. Nope. Yeah. The night was seriously somehow magical and full of synchronicities. Things kept happening twice. Or maybe it felt like that because the party was so intimate. Intimate, a.k.a. nobody cares. Zero. Zero <laughs> Plus, it's a tiny little shitty apartment. Right. People were outside on the street waiting to get in. No, they weren't. There was a full-door security with clipboard, a clipboard person. The gimmick of going to Anna's house is so exciting right now. <laughs> She can have people as l- over as long as she doesn't leave. That's her arrest thing. I don't know when is it when is immigration going to get on this? Are we deporting this lady or not? Right. What's the holdup? Right. Um, it was a classic New York house party. Even if someone was it, it was it was stifling. It, it's a one bedroom apartment. I mean, stop it. So <laughs> not only did she do that, but she's going to do this, and um, I have. A friend, I won't say her name because um, she may not want people to know, but I said, is this so ex-convent Anna Sorkin to film reality series, Delvey's Dinner Club, during house arrest. So far, she has gotten a production. So for, and I only know this because I've had to do this a couple times and I want no part of it ever again in my life. (laughs) But if you're going to go pitch a show, let's say I'm going to go try to talk a network into giving me a show. It's best if you walk in with a production company that's kind of known. And then you try to sell it. You shop it around. But if I just went in on my own, they'd be like, well, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. We won. We're probably not going to give you a show. But if you have an awesome production company that's signed up with you, so Anna did get a good production company. They're legitimate. 
and they are for real. Um, but they're saying she's landed her on scripted series Dan- Delvey's Dinner Club to be filmed inside her New York apartment where she's serving under house arrest. The series comes from Courtney Witt and Butternut. So I have a secret spy mm-hmm. that knows these things and said that these people are legitimate. It's not bullshit. Okay. Um, I like it. Yeah. So she's going to have dinner parties with guests that are like, you know, whatever. Okay. But they still have to sell it. Okay. Now, my spy friend says that probably won't be that hard. To do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But so they just, the way they write these stories, if, if, if she already has an unscripted series, what, what, where do I find it? What network? Is it on YouTube? Is it? Whatever, they don't say any of that because it, it doesn't have a home. It's not sure. been sold. Yep. Anyway, um, here's what's going to happen. She wants to tell her story in a new show, and she'll do it through what's already become one of her hottest tables in town, invitation-only intimate dinners at her home. There, a Delvey-invited group of actors, musicians, founders, socialites, journalists, and other esteemed guests will join her each week around a private chef-catered table replete with candid conversations where there's no topic off limits. How about conning? How about fraudsters? (laughs) (laughs) Including Anna's experience with the criminal justice system and her strategy to rebuild her image and her plans for the future. Okay. (gasps) Yep. I don't like bad behavior being rewarded. And this country is really good at that. (laughs) There's one thing to say, I forgive you. There's a whole other thing to say, I'm going, to, I'm going to celebrate you with a television show. She should be deported, and I don't understand. Sure, are there people here that have been deported for a lot less or a lot more? Absolutely. But we're not doing comparisons, are we, termites? No. no we're judging on each case, and she needs to go. Yes. Yeah. Vote, vote her off. Update. Update. Oh, you little piggybacker piggy pigs. Oh, you little piggy pigs that are sharing passwords on Netflix. Oh. The hammer's coming down in late March. <laughs> They've released their date. What is it? Well, they just say late March. That's as, that's as only as specific I can get. That's a season. No. It's a two months. You got two months to get your shit together. To get your five ninety nine. <laughs> to get your $6. What's in, see what Netflix costs now. I don't even know. Okay. I pay for everything twice because I download it, and then they're like, well, you didn't do this, and you didn't. And I go like, fuck it. And then I do it again. Starts uh, at $6.99. Okay. Seven bucks. You need to get three fifty a month together for two months. Premium though. Mm. Premium gets four devices. Yep. Oh, Why it's exceeded over a hundred million views v- viewers. A hundred million little tiny pig piglets are out there. The most expensive is twenty bucks. Twenty bucks is the most expensive. That's four people. That cu- includes four people. All right. For seven bucks. These individual one device, you seven, watch ads. one, and you have to watch ads. Yeah. Ooh, boo. Yeah. These okay. individuals though will be able to transfer their new profiles, profiles to a new paid account, allowing them to carry over their preferences. Mm-hmm. Netflix said it had a tough, tough year due to its subscriber loss. First subscriber in more than a decade. Its customer base fell by two hundred thousand subscribers in the first quarter. You know why? I think a lot of people got it during COVID. And then they have to go back to work and life starts again. And they go, I don't need to be paying. I'm going to watch it. Right. Yeah, right. I keep them all just because I want to get home and watch stuff. Um, speaking of, I did, then we'll go back to updates. Two things watching. Jan season three is on YouTube. In America, you can only get it on YouTube, but that's fine. Looks great on TV. So funny. And I never talk about funny shows because I really don't think there are that many. And maybe I'm jaded because of what I do and I see comedy every night of my life, but it is funny, funny. I told Lewis he's going to be home for a couple of days. I'm like, because I think the YouTube thing, Lou gets it, but mm-hmm. it wouldn't be what he would think of. <laughs> um, if you want something funny, it's quirky, very Canadian. <clears throat> um, and by the way, and I'm not just saying this because she's my friend mm-hmm. and she does sing one of the um, songs in my special that's coming out on Amazon. Um, yeah, like she did on the last one. But aside from that, I wouldn't, if I didn't think it was funny, I just wouldn't talk about it. Right. I mean, I, it's so quirky, Canadian, funny, not like letter Kenny, not that Canadian, but Canadian enough. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah yeah. McLaughlin's in one of them. And she is so goddamn funny. Everybody <laughs> on it has a sense of humor, yeah. except 
Katie Lang, I'm not sure was acting. she's she, yeah, acting. I'm like, I think she's just a very serious person. She's not mean or nothing. She seems nice enough, but it's she doesn't seem to like like Michael Blue Buble gets it like to go along with the fun. They're not even really acting. They're just kind of being themselves. And I think that's why I think Sarah McLaughlin is very capable of being silly and goofy. And Michael Buble is certainly the same. Uh, but Katie Lang, I was like, oh, you are a, but, well, Jan told me she didn't, she drove her motorcycle to the set on her own and showed up in her own clothes and was like, I'm ready. Yeah, good for you. I don't need makeup. <clears throat> low, 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 low expense. Low yeah, low maintenance. low maintenance. Not a diva. Nope. All right. And the other show, if you haven't started watching, you have to hit your anxiety button, though, super high. Oh my, uh, the whole show, I'm just like, <laughs> I'm so anxious because I don't know how it's going to sort itself out. It's Your Honor on Amazon Prime. That's where my show will be, too. Um, on Amazon Prime. <laughs> With Brian Cranston, it is so good and so and it makes me excited because I'm going to New Orleans. Oh yeah! It also makes me think: Is it more dangerous than I remember? I don't know. I'll think about that. Mm. There's Louisiana termites. Louisiana termites. Am I safe? I think I'm safe. I never think twice about it. But anyway, it's so good. There's two seasons. I already plowed through season one, and now I've started season two. I'm just saying, if you got nothing going on, um, but it's not light. No. no, it's 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 very stressful, and if it was me, I would have ratted myself out day one and not even done anything Brian has done in the show. But whatever, <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Update: The Biebs. Oh, Justin Bieber sells another his entire another Canadian yep. for you paddles. Thank he sells his entire music catalog for a whopping two hundred million Stop. to hypnosis. Hypnosis, but they spelled that weirdly. Songs. Fifteen years after starting his career. Oh man, that's mm-hmm. not good. He sold him everything. He's awfully young to be selling all that. Yeah. I mean, Stevie Weeby Nicks is seventy-four. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I know. <laughs> so that's it. Two hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. I don't, not when you're this young. No, don't do that. I get why the old people are doing it. And I get why they're doing it for tax purposes. But he's a young man. Why would you, I don't get it. Unless he's really just tired of everything, which is possible, I suppose. But um, update. 200 million. Now, here's the thing. If the Biebs wants to drop out of life, he can right now. How old is he? Google how old Justin Bieber is. The I'm going to say he's 12. <laughs> Still have his 12-year-old girlfriend. <laughs> he's 28. 28? Yep. Wow. Yep. Post Malone's 27, so he can. Post Malone. Post Plus is 27? Yep. Well, aren't these kids very successful? Good for them. <laughs> sure are. Update. The Oath, this is a traitor update. The Oath Keepers members found guilty of seditious conspiracy, also known as being, what? A traitor. Three members of the Oath Keeper and a fourth keeper associated with the far-right militia group were convicted of seditious conspiracy by a jury on Monday in their role in January 6, 2021. The four men, so whatever, Roberto Minuta, Joseph Hackett, David Marshall, and Edward Vallejo were accused of plotting to stop, we know what he was doing, what they were all doing. Sentencing date has not been set. But I don't know. I tried to Google it to see what they're, what the possibility. But I will do updates on how much time they get. Okay. Um, uh, in closing arguments, the defense attorneys argued that the men has not conspired together to stop a Biden presidency, saying the government's presented um, their case presented no proof of a plan to storm the Capitol. They also repeatedly argued that not only was the government manipulating evidence, but there was no proof of a conspiracy between the group saying that while the jury might find statements from their clients offensive, that wasn't reason to stop them, or to convict them. Well, you know what? Those things all pile up, sir. It's very hard. Yeah, and they, I do notice, not all, but a lot of these guys look mid-50s, which is my age. And here's how, what I think happens. Mid-50s, 
you know for sure whether your life's worked out totally. or not. Yep. 45, you might still have time to save the ship. <laughs> 55, no. You're in it to win it, whatever you're doing. And I think a lot of these people, I mean, this guy on the bottom, like, I think they just, they're 55, they're pissed, their life didn't work out, and they're going, man. Right. The other problem is they're retired. They got nothing to do. Like that firefighter that was 62, retired. Right. You have nothing better to do than drive to D.C. and get involved in a giant thing. I think 55 is a dangerous agent, a age. I should watch my own self. God knows what I'm capable <laughs> of. Stuff. Right, but things are working out. So I'm a happy person. But if they're not working out, you know, you're divorced, your kids hate you, whatever. Could be weird. All right, this story. Um, I, I feel bad because I think this lady might be mentally ill. For reals, for reals. But I've never heard of anything like this. The first time I heard it, I was like, what? Doesn't she know there's alligators? Florida woman rescued from storm drain. For third time in less than two years. What? I know. Storm drain? A woman, a storm drain. A woman was pulled from a storm drain for the third time. The Delray Police Department said the officers and firefighters responded to a report of a woman possibly in distress while swimming in a canal near the 500 block of Lindell and such and such. The department said the officers located the woman, identified as, we'll just say, Lindsay, okay. and asked if she needed help. She ignored them and climbed into the storm drain pipe. She refused to come out and began crawling further into the culvert pipe. Oh, my God. This is what a cat would do. <laughs> it's just going the wrong way, and you're going after it. Uh. Firefighters were able to keep her between two sections of pipe while the other people came and used a an ladder and to a rescue harness to pull her out. She had minor injuries and was treated at the scene. She keeps swimming in these canals where you're not. In Florida. What's the matter with that? Well... I think there's something to matter, matter. Um, uh, the fire department previously released her from a storm drain in 2021 after she'd been missing for three weeks. That's crazy. She said she went swimming in a canal near her boyfriend's house. Well, she has a boyfriend. So somebody's fine with this behavior. The same night her boyfriend reported her as missing. While swimming, she said she entered a doorway in the shallow part of the canal and noticed a tunnel. She continued following tunnels until she was lost. Maybe she's a mermaid. Come on. Maybe she's trying to get back out to the sea. Stop it. Oh. Stop it. You never know. No, it's crazy. Um, listen to this. She was rescued after a woman called 911 to report a woman yelling for help from inside the drain. She said she'd stop walking in that area because she could see light and people walking past her. The woman, who was 43 at the time, told police she'd been walking the sewer system for about three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. She said she'd been living off an unopened can of ginger ale she found in the drain for looking for a way out. She was coherent, they said. Ginger ale. Her mother said she has a, a history of doing odd things. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of, uh, yeah, that's a little bit beyond odd. Yeah. We'll keep track of that lady. I'll make sure if she does it again, we know. Yeah. Holy shit! They found it. They found it. This is so cool. This one is very cool. Al Capone's sunken Prohibition era speakeasy revealed in eerie photos. Prohibition era. Uh, he is the boat. His name of his boat was the Kika. It mysteriously sank in 1932. <laughs> Underwater photographer Chris Roxborough do documented the shipwreck in Lake Charlevoix. Michigan, while diving with diver Lee Rosenberg. They said Capone had a house near the lake, and many people claimed to have seen him around during that time. He had several hideout houses in northern Michigan, an easy drive up from Chicago. The rumor is that after the, man of the manager of the ship was shot on board, it was scuttled by a local church group that was tired of the devil's parties, booze, drinks, and women. Wow. The devil. He, Al Capone, was supposedly the one who supplied the boozy parties during Prohibition era. They said it's a 200-foot-long ship. There's a picture of it. Wow. It's humongous. That's a big speakeasy. Yeah, it's over two stories tall. The limelight shines through the portals, casting shadows as we make our move. The wreck is still intact, so it's still at the bottom of the, of the lake. Wow. 
and good lighting and very clear water. It eerily lurks under the surface with so many stories to tell. Um, even before the wreckage, it wasn't without damage. Uh, the boat was old and deteriorating, so it had to be pumped out daily. It's rumored that the man who did the dirty work was paid in whiskey. Wow. Well, I would have taken that in Prohibition. Yes, I will be paid in whiskey. Shaw. Sure. Right. Yeah. Um, these pictures of it, though, are super duper cool. Um, so in 1929, the guy searching for it said, I can imagine what the parties were like and the, and the gambling were going strong and the booze was flowing like a river. I could imagine someone getting paid off. Everyone could hear the part and see the parties for sure. The boat was originally built as a lumber barge in 1889, but was converted into a floating dance hall with a bar and live music when it changed hands in 1928. Though everyone could hear the drunken parties, the Keokuk's location in the middle of the lake also had a very vantage point from any possible approach, giving them enough time to pre prevent an ambush from the cops. But it didn't stay away from trouble long. On New Year's Day, 1931... Ooh, the manager, Ed, was shot by a drunk person. What? Yep. Shocking. Yeah. Well, the photographer just describes a 200-long ship with open areas over two stories tall. In the following year of 1932, the, the Keokuk sank. Prohibition's over by then, though. It's unclear how or why the barge sank. They couldn't find any explanation. That's weird. Somebody must know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there you go. It's 50 feet down. Wow. Yeah, that's they, not that far. They call the sea. Yeah. If you know how to dive with diving equipment, you can get down there. Go have a look around. I don't know how to use those tanks. I will never be diving in my life because I feel like there's math involved, and I can't have math involved in my own life and death. Right. I can't yeah. do it. No, yeah. I'll snorkel. Yep. That's it. This is super cool. Yeah. Holy shit. They found it. If you guys ever Googled... I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right, but I've seen them before on, on TikTok. Palace cats, P-A-L-L-A-S. Uh -uh. They kind of look like a mix between a bobcat and a cat. Uh -huh. They're super duper furry. Okay. They have crazy, their ears, instead of going up, more go on the side. Mm -hmm. And uh, so rare cats discovered on the world's highest mountain. Uh, in 2019, scientists from eight countries conducted the most comprehensive expedition to Mount Everest to date in the Kumba region of Nepal. The research was part of a project called the National Geographic and Rolex Perpetual Planet Everest Expedition. That was really long, you guys. Yeah. You didn't have to name it all that. You nope. could have cut that down a lot. In a paper published in Cat News, scientists revealed that they found the first evidence of palace cats on Mount Everest in the Sagamatha National Park. The cat is named in honor of Peter Simon, Pal Peter Simon Palace. The cat... The scientist who first described the species in 1776. Whoa. Yeah. Cool. It has a wide but fragmented distribution across the grasslands of Asia, Mongolia, and Russia, making up the majority. That's where I've seen them on Russian TikToks. All right. Yeah, there's yeah. people that have them. Yep. And I don't know how you. I also don't understand why my cat, Z, cat, Z. Yeah, you have a lot of cats. I have a lot of. Yeah, but I mean, if it goes below 50, they are literally taking their paws and banging on the glass door. <laughs> this guy lives on Mount Everest. Right. It's 50 below, and this cat is totally fine. He's like, He's super feral. You're mildly feral. He's super feral, right? Um, a genetic analysis of the samples confirmed that at least two palace cats in inhabit Mount Everest. The experts found pika and mountain weasel DNA in the samples, which are important, serious food sources. So they're eating up the, oh, I see. They're eating mountain weasels. Gross. Yeah, but how many can you find in Mount Everest in a snowstorm? I don't get it. They went undetected up until 2019. Further research is needed to investigate the population range density of diet. It's really a cool looking cat, though. This story is mainly just go Google the Google the look of that cat. It's awesome looking. Wow! Holy cool. shit! They found it. Last one. We have three today. Wonderful. Scientists find this is crazy. If I didn't hate the cold so much, I'd love to go to some sort of expedition to Siberia. Really? Yep. Cool. I just can't take the cold. No. Scientists find perfectly preserved nine thousand year old bison in Siberia. Nine thousand. It's amazing what could be found in the 
Siberian permafrost. An approximately 9,000-year-old bison was previously found frozen and preserved in the Russian wilderness. The animal is a steepy bison, a species that is now extinct. According to the Oh My magazine, the bison roamed the entire European continent about 2 million years ago up to about 9,000 years ago. The extinct species of bison is much taller and more massive than a typical modern bison. Their horns were also much longer and pointed upwards. The specimen has been coined the Yucca Gear bison because that's near the location where it was discovered trapped in the snow and ice of the Siberian plains. That's Can awesome. you imagine? No. I know there's a picture of what they did look like. That's just so awesome. I wonder if they're going to dig it all out. Uh, th- this bison isn't the only frozen in animal for Russia to make headlines lately, though. A cave lion cub that researchers aged to be roughly 28,000 years old is one of the best preserved animals from the Ice Age ever uncovered. Because it was frozen in the ice, the cub's teeth, skin, organs, and tissues all remain intact and in researchable condition. That's because everything's melting up there. So, you know, so weird shit's going to start popping out. I'd like to be there. My friend Kevin, who's a comedian but also a veterinarian, Dr. Kevin Fitzgerald in Denver, he would go to Siberia every year. Polar bears. He investigates what's going on with them. Yeah, he's a very cool guy. He's like truly like, you know, there's a lot of weird comedians that have weird (laughs) jobs where you're like, what? Like, you're a scientist, too? That's crazy. I didn't forfeit anything getting into this gig. You gave up that? (laughs) But, like, Kevin's still a real vet in Denver. But, yeah, he, well, he knows a lot about, he's written books on reptile poisons, like crazy smart things. But he goes to Siberia and Antarctica Antarctica, because he's, like, one of the guys in charge of whatever's going to happen to the polar bears. Wow. I know, and I ask him to tell me what happens, and he just goes, he's, he's a hippie. He just goes, Baby, you don't want to know. Oh. 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 It's the end of the world. Yeah. 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 All right. Moving on to news. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who here wants to climb Machu Picchu? Not, Not this lady. Nope. 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 I don't even. Does Southwest go there? How do I get there? Is no. There a bar? No. I've had friends do it. People well, people I knew. I wouldn't call them friends. <laughs> I just, I, I, it looks too frightening yeah. at points. Like there was that New Orleans um, Saint. Saint guy that had ALS and he wanted to go up there and his friend, he was in a wheelchair at that point and his friends were carrying him in a wheelchair up to the top. I mean, some of the, some of the narrow passages, Steve something. Steve Gleason. Steve Gleason. Yep. It was a great show, but it was on ESPN or something. It's a 30 for 30. Oh, it's a 30 for 30? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, go watch that. I mean, I'm terrified watching them carry a man in a wheelchair. And I would be even more terrified if me if it's me walking by myself. And if I'm Steve in the wheelchair, I'm super duper terrified. Right. They're just going to drop me. True. Um, well, guess what? If your dream is to climb it, your dream is temporarily closed. Whoa. Machu Picchu is closed to visitors indefinitely. Why? I know, right? There's a lot of people that sign up for this. It's like Everest, but not. Right. It's saner than Everest. Yeah. Well, this could be within my valley. I could do this. Everest I cannot do. But I don't want to. I feel like it's too dangerous. Right. Um, uh, On Saturday, Machu Picchu was closed to visitors indefinitely. Per a report from Daniel uh, uh, Politi of the Associated Press, the culture ministry said that it had closed the country's most famous tourist attraction in addition to the Inca Trail leading up to the site to protect the safety of tourists and the general population. The move comes off the back of reports of an increase in anti-government protests across the country. Upwards of 400 visitors, 300 of whom were foreign, were actually stranded at Machu Picchu last month, unable to leave after Peru launched, a violent, launched into violent political unrest. In other yeah. words, this isn't actually premature. The protests are a result of impeachment and imprisonment of Peru's first leader with a with a rule, Andean, Andean? I don't know. Like the Andes. Uh, yeah. yeah. Andean? Yeah. Andean. Andean. After he attempted to dissolve Congress. Um, 
some of the people, the train service has been closed and there were people up there. So they've opted to leave the area by foot. And that reportedly involves a six to seven hour walk through, through what? A jungle. Oh my Guess what's oh, out there? Anaconda. Poison frogs, snakes. Yeah. Toadzilla. Toadzilla. Yeah. He was in Australia, but I'm sure there's yeah. one in South America. Yeah, they do. Everything's migrating. While it's hardly the big, <laughs> <laughs> while it's hardly the biggest concern, anyone who'd already bought tickets for Machu Picchu from Saturday until one month after whenever the protest ends will be eligible for a free refund. So there you go. <laughs> okay, Wonderful. you guys want to? You can get good. You, it's closed. So sad. Yeah. So, moving on. Well, that, that, this is just a brief. Are you kidding me? So remember Tiger King? We all watched the show during Covidius. Yeah. Carol Baskin. Yeah, she's crazy. She's crazy. I'm saying that as an opinion, so don't sue me, Carol. Yeah. Carol Schmerl. Um, My opinion, too. She's been causing a lot of shit lately. It's going to get into trouble, too. Mark my words. More trouble. As my dad says, keep your mouth shut. People can't do it. Nope. Um, yeah. Family of Carol Baskin's dead, quote, that's in quotes. Yeah. Husband breaks silence on claim that he's alive and well. Yeah. She said, um, Baskin has a stunning claim that the husband, who we all, those of us who believe it, think she killed. Yeah, she fed him to the tigers. She fed him to the tigers. I'm yeah. sure I think she did. Yeah. Well, she says he's been found alive and well in Costa Rica. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> And then I had to Google because I forgot. Why did she want to kill him? Well, he wanted a divorce. Mm-hmm. He told his friends, if anything happens to me, she did it. Yep. And then, and then one guy that worked with her and him, he was acting out, and she said, you better watch it, or I'll do to you what I did to him. I'll put you in the grinder, and you'll be food. True that. The daughters of the, of the man who's missing, I think dead, she said it's simply not true. Um... She did this, meaning Carol did it, to create a different narrative about his appearance. Lewis, who married the big married Baskin in 1991, vanished without a trace in 19, August of 1997 and was declared legally dead in 2002, which means she can collect all the life insurance then. You have to be declared legally dead. Oh, wow. She's 61. She's vehemently denied any involvement with her spouse's disappearance. And blasted rumors that she put his body through a meat grinder and fed it to tigers at her rescue in Tampa, her rescue ranch. Um, people, are, people are crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna, you know meat well, let's go back to Florida's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I like to go because I like crazy, but you don't. I'm. You get involved in shit like this. Yeah. It's getting weird. yeah. Um. They said her claims. Reek of desperations in a blatant bid to deflect speculation that she may know crucial details about Don. His name is Don Lewis. Don's disappearance. She's trying to do anything she can to claim. They put her on fucking uh, Dancing with the Stars. Oh, I forgot about that. Right. Yep. What are you doing, guys? No, but why would you book her? I think they might be. I don't watch the show. What season are we in? Sometimes I don't know who's the dancer and who's the star. <laughs> so I will tell you where we're at. <laughs> um, the dis- missing guy, they loathe her. They've always hated her. But they've stopped short of saying she was involved. But now they're pissed. We're on episode um, 31. They're on, they're on season, 31 mm-hmm. season 31? Of Dancing with the Stars? Yep. Oh, my God. Yep. Well, yeah, we're out of people that can dance. Yeah, How many survivors are there? I saw an ad for that during the Super Bowl. I was uh, like, what? Are we still, are that still on? Dancing with the Stars started in 2005. Um, she claims he's alive and well in Costa Rica. 43. 43, 43 seasons, seasons of Survivor. Of Survivor. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. I think I, I think I watched one, and I was like, this is just, I don't like that it's it's mean. And I'm not the nicest person in the world all the time, but I don't like, okay. You can watch it on Pluto. <laughs> on what? Pluto. What's Pluto? I don't know. <laughs> um, you don't have a special one. I wish, 
a lot of you had seen this. So the Ticketmaster guy, oh, yeah. he had to go up in front of senators. It's If you've seen my act, I have a giant thing about everybody being too old. And like when Zuckerberg got there, uh-huh. none of them knew what to ask. Yeah. Well, this was just as bad. <laughs> because they don't even understand. I don't expect people to understand that aren't selling tickets. Because I use these people. I use Ticketmaster and Live Nation and blah, 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 blah. And I understand what's going on. I don't expect people not in the business to get it. But the questions they were asking, you it's clear they haven't bought a concert ticket in 20 years. Yep. As a human, like as a per- customer, not... Oh, my God. The Senate Judiciary, Judiciary Committee set its sights on Ticketmaster's monopoly of the concert ticket sales <laughs> industry in one of its first hearings. Senator Amy Klobuchar, Democrat, Minnesota, drew on her own love of music and lamented that today's teens cannot easily afford concert tickets the way she could in her youth. Amy's not that old. No. 50s, I believe. She's so out of touch, though. Not, she, this is what she said. She recurred from hopping into a friend's van and going to see Led Zeppelin, the Cars, and Aerosmith. And then she said, now I don't think it's easy for high school kids to make their money at a baker's pie shop. <laughs> what? what the fuck? <laughs> you got to say it in her accent. Bake. Oh, well, the Minnesota. Yeah. Now I don't think it's easy for the high school kids to make their money at the baker's pie shop on the weekends <laughs> and buy tickets to go see these major concerts. <laughs> First of all, Amy, uh, no, it's no pie. kid <laughs> at the Taylor Swift concert bought their own ticket. No. And nobody works at a pie shop, a no. baker's pie shop. Um, why don't you say they're down at the cobbler's store right. making shoes? <laughs> it's just so out of touch. Yes, in our generation, if you had some sort of bullshit job, I could afford my own. I could afford my own ticket. Right. That's not the case anymore. No, Mm-mm. <laughs> I don't even think they understood. I the Ticketmaster guy got off easy because yeah. they didn't know what to ask him. I know what I would have asked him, and he would have not liked my questions. Nope. Um. The Minnesota, they all tried to work in a Taylor Swift reference, too, because they thought that made them hip, Mm -hmm. these senators. She said, to have a strong capitalist system, you need to have competition. You can't have too much constellation. Something that, unfortunately, for this country, as an ode to Taylor Swift, we all know too well. Come on. Stop it. Don't insult Taylor. We need to make sure to have competition bring prices down. They're not going down, Amy. Yes, Live Nation and Ticketmaster dominate 70% of the ticket sales market, and since their merger in 2010, she also noted the Government Accountability Office study found some 27% of the ticket prices now go to fees. Um, she and, Oh, and then Richard Blumenthal thought he was hilarious for this one. He says to the Ticketmaster guy, I want to congratulate you on a stunning achievement. You brought Republicans and Democrats together. Dude. Not funny. <laughs> Didn't work. Move on. Yep. Ticketmaster should look in the mirror and say, I'm the problem, it's me. Get it? The Taylor song? It's me. I'm, <laughs> I'm the problem, it's me. That was in a nod to Swift's anti-hero. Senator Mike Lee, I know no idea, Republican <laughs> Utah, said he hoped Republicans would be in the majority in the majority by this point, making him the chair of the antitrust subcommittee. To be honest, I'd hope to get the gavel back a few months ago. But once again, she's sheer captain, and I'm on the bleachers in a reference to Swift's You Belong to Me. Yes, I like it. They made their their interns do this. Here's the thing. (laughs) It's all about supply and demand. There are plenty of concerts that Ticketmaster handles that come to the Bridgestone in Nashville, and tickets are 29 bucks because there's just not 18,000 people clamoring to get that ticket. What they will, what they do do though, these questions were so stupid. They're never going to get to the bottom of it with this kind of horseshit. But <laughs> there's really no bottom to it. No. And I'll say this because I can't, I don't want to get too much into it because it's how I make money. But you can, as the artist, designate how, much? how many seats out of the venue will be. A ch- either call it's either called platinum or dynamic pricing, whatever you want to call it. That means it's a free for all. Right. 
So you guys can resell them to each other for as much as the market will bear. Now, like if I have a show that I know is going to be a popular one, I put a cap on that. And I say only these amount of seats can do that. And then I want the ones that are 39 and 29 and 42 and 59, they have to stay that way. Right. I feel like somebody in Tay Tay's boat forgot. Yeah. The whole. I don't think it was greed. I don't think it was greed. I don't think Tay Tay no. would do that. No. And it's not because, I mean, I don't like her as much. I, I like yes, She's fine. You love her. No, my nieces love her. I think she's fine. I like the song about the lady from St. Louis. It goes to Rhode Island, whatever. Um, no, I think she's a very good writer, but I gotta have the you know I'm I'm way older than her. Like she she's for the she's for the younger people. Um, which is fine, and she's very outspoken about things, which is good. Um, but it seems to me like the entire arena became dynamic pricing. And I don't know how that happened. Now, Ticketmaster is to blame for the fact that they didn't have enough people for their bots. And the pre-sale, they ran out of tickets. That's on you guys. Somebody forgot to do that. But I don't know. I mean, maybe there's that many people that are just reselling. There is a way to do that, though. You say, if it's really getting nutty, you say the ticket has to match the ID. I am. I should be running something over there. Or at least, can I be the lady on the couch that every once in a while, while they're having a meeting and I'm watching House Hunters, I can go, why don't you just use an ID thing? (laughs) And then I just go back to what I'm doing. Um, I don't really want to be involved in the details. But anyway, um, if you'd like to amuse yourself, go online and watch those hearings. I mean, they might as well have just said, well, why can't you just go down to Sears and get in line? (laughs) Fucking... They have no idea what they're talking. A kid that works at a baker's pie shop. What? What? No one's buying pies. The kids aren't buying their own tickets. No. What kid could? Four pies. If my 14-year-old nieces end up at Taylor Swift, do you think they save their confirmation first communion? Their car- your, I would tell them, your confirmation money and your first communion money and your babysitting money, you still ain't close to a Tay-Tay ticket. Nope. I'm going to need your cat. I'm going to take your cat. And I'm taking your dog. That's the payment. You what? You can't your dog. Yeah. Bye. All right. This makes me um, laugh okay. because I have felt this way for a long time. Okay. The same way I feel about Bed Bath and Beyond. Oh boy. <laughs> I feel that way about Planet Fitness. What? Because as much as I travel. And go to every city in America. There's always a lot of Planet Fitnesses. That's hard to say. Fit and I. That's good. <laughs> the Fit and I. The, the Planet. Fit-nye. The Planet Fit and I. There's rarely anyone in them. Um, memberships are like a dollar. Uh-huh. It doesn't seem right. No, it cool. doesn't. There's something going on. I've always thought when it doesn't seem right, it's probably not right. right. And it's not like there's only one in every city. There's in all kinds of strip malls. Yeah. Well, like big, where Dick's Sporting Goods and there's a plant. There's like a thousand treadmills in there and everything's purple. I've gone to them on the road because you can get a guest pass. I don't remember what it costs. Um, but then COVID, even COVID, people quit going to the gyms. Yes, people will go back, but still... That didn't take them down. Well, (laughs) turns out I'm not the only person that might think there's something fishy going on here. Think about it, though. Even if you buy the membership, literally they're 10 bucks. How are you guys making money? They signed everybody up and worked on that. Well, here, I'm going to tell you what's going on. Well, here's the beginning, and we're going to stay hot on this because I have a Bed Bath & Beyond update for next week. Came in late today. I didn't have time to organize it. Two Uh things. One thing is one of the founding fathers is 92. He's like, yeah, we kind of missed the boat on that Internet deal. Stop it. What? Stop it. What? Ah! That blip. Planet Fitness is the leading franchisor of low-cost gyms in the United States. A new short report dives into some alleged questionable business practices by the company. Because, like, uh, let's say I'm in Omaha, and for whatever reason, driving around, there's a giant Planet Fitness, and there's, like, four people. Right. 
That's it. So you made $40 right. <laughs> for the month. You haven't even paid off one treadmill. Right. A leading gym operator in the United States is a target of a new short report. The Thursday report from the Bear Cave lays out a case that Planet Fitness has issues with overbilling, uncancelable memberships, and is lying about the locations of its gyms. Uh-huh. uh-huh. What happened? With over 2,000 locations in the United States, Planet Fitness is the leading franchisor of low-cost gyms. At 40 times forward earnings, investors believe Franchise Network is healthy and has room to grow. The Bear Cave does not. An emo report from the Bear Cave, an author, Edwin Dorsey, reads, Dorsey said he used the Freedom of Information Act request to uncover hundreds of complaints against the gym chain by customers. A pattern of cancellation attempts being ignored was among the issues found in the... Okay, so let's... But even still, it's still... At least when they run those specials, it's 10 bucks. <clears throat> so even if you don't cancel me and I say, please do, you only made $120 off me. That did not pay for laundering towels. Every um, The report said Planet Fitness relies on beginners and could see high cancellation as a result, but it doesn't make it easy on customers to cancel. The company's website says a cancellation can not be done online, over the phone, or email, or through an app. Instead... Customers have to co- have to have to cancel in person and send a letter with the reasons for the cancellations. Stop. That doesn't Come what? On. What is this? Nineteen fifty two. Yes. Most Planet Fitness gyms require access to checking accounts or debit cards. Oh no! No. Mm-hmm. Wow. A move that is done to prevent credit card disputes. The report lays out many complaints over the years and investigations into the practices. Bear Cave also cites an F rating for Planet Fitness from the Better Business oh, yeah. Bureau. Oh, F. God, wow. And a 1.3 star rating out of 5. <laughs> <laughs> Another issue repays is the allegation that Planet Fitness created a fake investor presentation slide to obscure franchise saturation. Oh, my God. The report said in many markets, the Planet Fitness locations are saturated. A map of the company's investor presentation shows dots of locations spaced out in states, a move that could be done to show room for growth to excite investors. Wow. The Bear Cave finds it concerning that Planet Fitness appears to have simply <laughs> faked its gym location slide in, in, in its most recent investor presentation. So they're doing these presentations getting money uh-huh. and saying, look at all the room to grow, and they're lying about the ones where they're at. Yeah, They're going, oh, my God, look at this. Broad Street's got plenty of room. Yeah. Total, totally no. made up. The Bear Cave is left wondering whether Planet Fitness is actually a thriving gym franchise or an illegal billing operation with gyms on the side. Oh, oh smack! Okay. Smack! Wow. Finally, though, somebody besides me just goes, how can that be? Well, how a, can that exist? That's a lot of purple equipment. Yeah, purple lighting, yes, purple really equipment. Yes. Um. Um, okay, so this is kind of crazy. So, Antarctica. What a transition. We're transitioning <laughs> to Antarctica. Satellite images show a frozen block the size of Houston as it breaks away from the Brunt Ice Shelf. A 600-square-mile iceberg broke off the shelf on Sunday. Now, here's the thing. They say this is normal and natural, but it made me sad because there were penguins. Oh. I know. What about the penguins? I don't know. I love penguins. Well, what if they're on the wrong side? Well, right? They've been following this thing since 2012. But imagine yeah. imagine you're out in the ocean, and there's a, there's a, it, the, the thing that broke off is 600 square miles. It's the size of London or Houston. Oh. That's just floating around now. They said it's not a big deal that, I mean, it's not something that's going to create problems, but I would think it's called calving, a calving event. Like C-A-L-V-I-N-G. Calving of glaciers is often accompanied by a loud cracking or booming sound before blocks of ice up to 60 meters, 200 feet high, break loose and crash into the water. It can cause large and hazardous waves, but it's a natural thing. They're saying, but it is happening a shit ton more because of 
low temperature going on, the global warming that you know, half the people don't believe. But whatever, it's happening. I'm just saying that's in, that's incredible to think of an iceberg that's as big as yeah. Houston. Yeah. <laughs> Houston, we have um, all right. I don't know what to do next. <laughs> well, they, do you want a moral dilemma? Sure. Well, and then I've got two. Okay, so I'm going to tell you why you're... Two moral dilemmas. No, I've got... No. I'm, I know what side of this I'm on already. The Guggenheim Museum is facing a lawsuit from a Jewish family who say their ancestors were taken advantage of by a renowned art dealer after he bought a painting by Pablo Picasso from them as they were escaping the Nazis in 1938. The 1904, what, what, year my grandpa was born, <laughs> work by, Spani by the Spanish artist Woman Ironing was given to the Guggenheim in 1978 by the family of the art dealer Justin Thanhauser, who bought the painting from Carl and Rosie Adler as the company were attempting to flee to South America. It is now estimated to be worth $100-200 million. According to the lawsuit filed in the Manhattan Supreme Court, Thanhauser, a lifelong friend of Picasso's, paid the Adlers $1,552 for the painting. Wow. The equivalent to 30000 today. So he only oh. gave them... Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think that's war profiteering. Yep. I think it could fall under that. You're taking advantage of a situation that's completely fucked up. Thanhauser's family gave the painting for free to the Guggenheim Museum Foundation in, 19, in 1976. So the, yeah. they, the family, didn't, well, really profit off of it if they gave it away. Right. But the Guggenheim needs to give it back to that family. Yes. Yeah. The, re the Adler's relatives, including their grandchildren, say that the couple would have never sold it for that price had they not been fa 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 facing persecution. Um, in 2012, a New York Times article called Woman Ironing, one of the Guggenheim's most prized possessions. Or you can keep it, Guggenheim, but give them the money. Uh -huh. Give them what it's worth. Right. Pay for it. That's bullshit to just keep it when you know this. The family said the painting is in the wrongful possession of the Guggenheim. The lawsuit estimates that the painting to be worth $100-$200 million. They, The family... Bought the painting. The Adler family bought the painting originally. The Jewish family bought it from the, the Thanhauser's father. Oh, oh! So wow. he knew to go get yeah, it back. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Um, they bought it from his father Heinrich in 1916 in Munich. Following the rise of Hitler, the Adlers saw their lives shattered when Hitler rose to power. During that period, Karl Adler looked to selling the painting, seeking he was trying to get fourteen thousand dollars. He only got fifteen hundred. 14000 back then would have been 300000 but he didn't get it. Less than a year after World War II began, in thirty-eight, the, the couple found themselves with no choice other than to sell due to the Nazis' policy stripping of the jobs and opportunities. They sold, then Thanhauser, they sold it back to Thanhauser for 1500 bucks. He then fled his homeland and set, settled in New York. He gifted the, that painting and many other works upon his death in 1976. Yep, but this is all because of that... Uh, Holocaust war, get your stuff back law. That's yes. probably not how it's actually phrased. No, probably a little short. Um, this is an acronym. Yeah. That's awful. Well, maybe they'll get it back. Yeah. I think they'll get it back. Yep. Um, all right. It's not really a feel-good story oh. to end on, but it's going to make it's going to make some people feel good. Some? Some. Like I'm not I'm not really a procrastinator at all. Of procrastinators, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not really one. Sometimes. I can be one, but it's not like an issue. Mm -hmm. Like I have friends, two friends that I know of, that their procrastination is an issue. Mm -hmm. Like it it upsets people that are friends and family, and, yep. you know, we, we're going to leave for the airport at 8, yep. and, you know, it's 8.45, and they're okay. standing there eating a fucking donut. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I am a snap to a person when I need to be given, you know, an opportunity. I yeah. might choose to procrastinate, but it's not. But anyway, a lot of people say those people are lazy. This study says nay, nay. Oh. In honor of John Panette, my nay, nay. They are not lazy. Mm -mm. If you think you're a procrastinator, do you think this is one? I have a friend who is chronically late, too. Really? Yeah, he... I finally had to say something. In a, in a friendship. I'm like, dude... I love hanging out with you. I'm oh, just a comedian friend. Yep. Have a great time. 
um, you're like a brother to me. But if you cannot get your shit together with this late bullshit, not 10 minutes late, 45. Very late. Yeah, I just, because eventually you start to get pissed because it's your time. But they didn't mean it like that. They just get caught up in stuff and can't. And then I'm like, do you need medication? Like, do you have, no, I mean, do you have like an ADD issue where you're too easily distracted? If, which is fine if you're on your own, but not when you make plays with people. Anyway, if you're stuck in what seems like an endless style cycle of procrastination, guilt, and chaos, you might be wondering, why am I so lazy? Why can't I just get myself together? Despite the common... See, <laughs> I would substitute procrastination with drinking. <laughs> why am I still drinking like this? Like, why did I get so overstimulated last night and have eight beers when there was no need for that, Kathleen? There was no need to drink the whole bottle of wine. That was stupid. It was a Thursday. You weren't doing nothing. See, I don't have these questions with my conscience about being late, but I might about drinking. Um, despite the common perception, laziness usually isn't the reason for, for procrastination, said Jenny Yip, a clinical psychologist and executive director of the Los Angeles-based Little Thinker Center, which helps children with academic challenges. Laziness is like, I have absolutely no idea to even think about this. Procrastination is, it troubles me to think about this, and therefore, it's hard for me to get the job done. That's a big difference. Knowing why you procrastinate and learning how to combat it are only way, the only ways to change your behavior. You could be the perfectionist, the dreamer, the warrior, or the defier. All of these are procrastination, pro, I can't even say it. procrastination styles they list in her book. So there's the perfectionist and the warrior. This is category one. Uh -huh. See if you're in it, procrastinating people. A procrastinator is usually a perfectionist. Yeah. I have a friend who I know he would say this would pertain to his wife because the, <laughs> cause she can't decide on things. Oh. Like I, I've decided to move by a different house, mm -hmm. um, picked out a hot tub. Mm -hmm. He and his wife still hadn't chosen paint color for their third floor bedroom. Stop it. I had done all that. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I, I just don't, I just right. go, 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 go. Right. Because the perfectionist needs things done per perfectly. All T's cross and dies on it. It takes an insurmountable amount of energy. Well, there's something I don't need. If anything, my things are done loosely. Loosely, yeah. Yeah, there's no T's cross and no, no, no. Warriors tend to be indecisive and dependent on others for advice and reassurance before taking initiative on their own. They also have a high resistance to change preferring the safety of the known. Both perfectionists and warriors might start off tasks, but they might put off starting tasks due to fear of failure or criticism. Challenge those beliefs in your behavior by recognizing that per perfectionist standards are unrealistic. Replace them that are standards that are good enough instead while giving, your per uh, per self, giving yourself permission to make some mistakes. Then there's the dreamer. Okay. You people out there. A dreamer procrastinator doesn't like the nitty-gritty logistical details often needed to get projects done. They like to have ideas. That stuff is fun. It's kind of boring or difficult then to execute these visions. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Uh -huh. Like sometimes I think, well, wouldn't it be cool if I did a lot, like there's some woods by me, I could do stuff. And then I'm like, my dad would. My dad can dream it and see, and he does it. He I'm do like, stuff. I don't know, put a bar in there or, you know, in the woods. In the woods. Oh my God, How great would that, that be? Yes. A drinking yes. cabin? Yeah, a drinking cabin. Like, yes. but then I'm like, nah, leave it the woods. <laughs> I don't know. Leave but your, your deck and go out Well, I don't want to ruin that. There's fox and stuff. They don't ruin their house. Dreamers might also think of themselves as people for whom fate will intervene, making proactive hard work and efficiency appear unnecessary. That's the Jesus will do it? Yeah, no. Yeah. No, I ain't, no, I'm not putting that on him. Mm -hmm. And like a perfectionist, a dreamer might always want something better. Train yourself to differentiate between dreams and goals and approach goals with six questions. What, when, where, who, why, and how? Change soon or one day to specific times. Oh, this is too much for a dreamer. Yeah. Write your plans on a timeline. They're never going to do that. Nope. They're the defier. This is the one I like. <laughs> the people with defiant procrastination tend to live 
tend to view life in terms of what others expect or require them to do, not what they want. This pessimism diminishes their motivation to complete task. If you have this mindset, find positive ways to feel in control. Strive to act rather than react and try to work with a team or a supervisor, not against them. <laughs> if, so if something doesn't sit well with you, rather than being passive aggressive about it, acknowledge what it is or isn't working and then have a conversation with whoever is giving you this assignment. <laughs> defiers, <laughs> defiers don't usually feel Hard. equipped to have these conversations with those they see as authority figures, or they don't believe that having the conversation would give them any benefit or positive outcome. That is not necessarily true. Hmm. For some people who procrastinate, their sense of self is so fragile that the idea of doing something and failing would just tip them over into complete worthlessness. I've never met anybody that far gone. Like I'd say I have a friend who's a dreamer mm -hmm. where she'll say things like, oh, this year it would be great if I lost like 60 pounds. But then they don't do anything. Right. They're just dreaming. Yep. And it's like, you know, I, I sit around and go, huh, what if I had a house with tons of land and I had some ponies? No. Because no. realistically, I don't you want, want the, a pony. Well, that's the thing. I don't want a pony bad enough. Right. Uh -uh. No, that's a lot of work. It's like you can't procrastinate. down in Nashville and Franklin and Brentwood, you drive by some places, you're like, oh, yeah. But then I also have had a horse in my life, and I know it's just horse shit. It just stands there. Literally. Yes. Shit. No, I mean <laughs> literal horse shit. Like, yeah. But, I mean, the dreamer thing where I have friends who will say things where I know for a fact they're never going to do anything about it. But, it's, you know, I let them talk to say what they want. Here's my dreams and wishes. Um, visualization helps. If you can visualize yourself completing a task, then it becomes more achievable simply because you have an idea that it can be done. At the end of the day, how you approach life is all about your belief system. If you believe you can, you can. If you believe you cannot, you can't. So whatever belie you believe, you're right. Well, that's bullshit right there. Yeah. Because I know for a fact, in high school, I believed I could get over the low hurdles. Oh, my God. Now, oh my God. I'm only five foot tall, uh -huh. but I'd seen it in the Olympics. And at track and field, for two years, I went to high school in the Ozarks, school of the Osage. I'm, um, I was an Osage Indian. We didn't have enough kids, so you could be on any team you wanted. You didn't even have to try out. You just had to show up because right. we're hillbilly. <laughs> so I went down to the track. Same it was a girl. black cinder rock track. Oh, God. And I believe, she says, this lady says, if you believe you can, you can. Yeah. Not true. Nope. I believed I could do it. So I, I went way far back. I saw the form in the Olympics. Uh -huh. I knew what I was supposed to hit that foot there and then spring my leg out. You just couldn't execute. And I believed I could. I thought I was going to clear like 10 of them. <laughs> I did not get past the first one. I ate cinder rocks. They were so deep into my leg. Oh. My mom had to get tweezers and uh, oh. what's the stuff that peroxide yeah. rocks are boiling out of my leg. No, it was a disaster. It was, I ate cinder. I fell so hard. And then, not only did I fall, but we had these track spike things, shoes. The back of it caught on my leg and flipped over and hit, oh <laughs> hit me God. in the head. The hurdle flipped and beat the back of my skull in, and I'm just laying there covered. I have cinders all in my face. They're in my knees. Oh. So don't tell people this stuff. <laughs> you sh it should say, it should say, if you believe you can, within reality, right. you can. Right. Like, I can tell you a million things I've thought. I've, if anything, I was over. That's how I broke uh, all of my toes. I thought I could be um, Olga Corbett on the carpet. That's oh. going to show you how. That's what I called it. That will show you my age. So before the other famous gymnasts, like Mary Lou Retton yeah. and all that, mm -hmm. there was a Romanian, I think, I think she or Russian, Olga Corbett. She was like from the 76 Olympics, Schnoz. 1976. Schnoz. And I watched the Olympics as a kid. I was like 10. And I was like, this is the coolest shit ever, right? And then I decided. Oh, my God. She's still alive. Yeah, she's still alive. She's on Twitter. She's probably 65. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I'll follow her on Twitter. She was nicknamed the Sparrow from Maine. 
The sparrow from Minsk. Minsk. Mm-hmm. Well, who's the Romanian? I don't know. She's from Belarus. Mm. She's from Belarus. The next one was the Romanian. Nadia Komanich. That's her. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I, this is a good one to leave you on. Second These are things I will never do in my act, <laughs> but they make me laugh. Nadia used fake tanner. Nadia used fake tanner. Yeah. Well, they're so white. Yeah. They're yeah. Eastern Euro white, yeah. where they almost don't look truly alive. Like, you got to smack them to get color. <laughs> Um, and I taught, I, tr- I tricked my sister into doing it too. So we watched the Olympics and I'm like, well, it seems to me to do this. You just got to get up enough speed. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, oh, no. once you get enough speed going, it <laughs> seems like you should just be able to do that. <laughs> so I set up this whole thing in the basement down a hallway mm-hmm. that was like, ready to go for a giant run and then a bunch of flips Mm -hmm. and cartwheels. And then I don't know how I thought I was just going to propel myself into the air like three times, but I did. I was just going to launch. And I ran down the hallway as fast as I could. So another shout out to this lady, if you believe you can. It doesn't mean you can. Not at all. I launched myself. I don't know what happened, but my feet hit the end of the hallway. I broke all my toes Mm -hmm. because I was going that fast. Mm -hmm. And I flipped. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So I don't think we should listen to what this lady says. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I couldn't wear shoes. If you believe you can, if you believe you cannot, you cannot. So whatever you believe, you're right. Well, I think if you can't, you probably can't. Wow. But I don't believe if you think you can, you can. No. Nope. Wow. <laughs> That's a feel-good story. Wow. Yeah. Everybody learned a little something. Oh. Let's not do shit you think you can just because you believe it. No. Go, you know, I should have read about hurdles. Yeah. Or had somebody tell me. I Again, I thought you just had to get enough speed up. It was a timing deal. Your foot had to go here, and then boom. should have read about hurdles. Well, it was the low hurdles, too. I mean, don't even talk about it. The high ones came up to, like, my shoulder. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I shouldn't even been out on the track field. True. No. All right, termites. So, heading to Las Vegas. Yep. It's still the Mirage, I found out. It's not the Hard Rock yet. No, they're transitioning. They're transitioning. <laughs> right. And then I'll be moving on to... Uh, Bronson's coming. Scottsdale. My friend Bronson is coming. Mm-hmm. My friend Lorreen is coming. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about anybody else. I don't know. Um, talking Stick. Then I'm moving on to Scottsdale, Talking Stick. And then I'm getting the hell out of Phoenix. As much as I love Phoenix... It is now going to be Super Bowl week there and the waste management, the golf thing, the one fun one where they have the hole and they give out free stuff and people throw things in. Um, that's also there. Dax, it's Dax my friend Dax, mm-hmm. the drummer. You got to go back for a corporate gig. Corporate gig. Uh, yeah, well, I have to get out of there anyway, but I do have to go for another gig. But even if I wouldn't have to go, mm-hmm. I don't think it's this is a week to be in Phoenix if you're not involved in one of those things. Right. If you're all part of the Super Bowl, yay, yay, hee-haw. Or the waste management, hee-haw, yeah. hoo totally. um, I don't know who planned that out. You shouldn't have, the high, forget it, yeah. Um, then, the Ryman. Then, the Ryman in Nashville. Um, very excited about that. I love that place. Um, Dusty's Dusty Slay is opening. He's so, so funny. I was so glad he was available because he's really not an opening act at all. He is a headliner in his own right, and he does his own shows, and he was nice enough to say yes. So Mm -hmm. that's super nice of him. Then New Orleans. And he's a Tennessee guy. Mm -hmm. And then New Orleans, and we added a show. Yep. Second show, New Orleans. People. Yeah, we just put it on sale. And Memphis, Graceland Soundstage, brand new venue. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. Memphis, I haven't been there forever. A hundred years ago, there was a club there. This is one of the weirdest club names, and I could name them all in the United States. Here's one of the weirder ones. Sir Laughs a Lot. Oh, I'd like that T-shirt. That'd be fun. It didn't. That'd be great. It didn't make it. No? Sir Laughs a Lot, sadly, did not make it. It's uh, it's St. Patrick's Day weekend. It is St. Patrick's Day weekend when I'm in Memphis. Yeah. Yes, I will be going early. Yes. Don't think I don't know where to go either. I do. I know where I'll be going. I'm not going to say it. But I know exactly <laughs> where I'm going for shrimp and grits. Meet and greet. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> if you know me, you'll be able to figure out where I'll be. <laughs> In Memphis. Um, so that's it, Tarmites. I hope you guys have a good, this is a no, no football week, sad times. No. We all have to suffer through and wait. You don't want to watch flag football? Flag football, no. Yeah. Chiefs against 49ers. Mm-hmm. My prediction? Yep. Chiefs. I'm predicting the Chiefs. Yeah. Not just because I'm from Missouri. And not just because I root for the Chiefs. I like Jalen Hurts a lot. Um, I like that there's Kelsey's on both teams. I just don't think you can stop Patrick Mahomes, even on one leg. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No, and Jalen was not that accurate the other night. I've seen him have much better games. So he might show up with a much better game this time. Um, But that would just be where I picked the Eagles over the 49ers and made it. A shit ton of money on that. But, and that doesn't mean I don't love George Kibbles and Bits. I do love George Kibbles and Bits. I love, I like Brock Purdy. I like the 49ers. I just thought the Eagles, and then it just turned into a shit show. It's Anita. The quarterback got hurt. Anita? She yeah. was her good luck charm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. right. So we're Super Bowl tonight. We're going into February. You're going to be February termites. Nice. It's the hardest month to get through in the cold states. Valentine. Valentine termites, or as my one friend used to say, Valentines. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. It would just make my ears bleed, but then I would try to get him to say it in real life for no reason, like in August. Right. <laughs> hey, what's that holiday in February? What's well, about love or something? <laughs> oh, you mean Valentines? Yeah. I just needed to hear it every now and then. Yep. yep. He also said supposedly. So then I would try to get him to say the sentence by accident. Supposedly yeah. it's Valentines. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, termites, that's it.